mention this. Let's play this. Where's that clip? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, let's play this actually. Let's play this. Have you guys seen this? I haven't seen it yet, but it's regarding Brendan Shaw. It's by the channel called Retroactive. It says the endless fall of Brendan Shaw. I need to check this out. I went to watch this with you fresh. I've not actually seen this. So I'm going to pop this on the screen now. We're going to watch this together. But this looks absolutely banging already. He does some really good videos. So let's check this out and see what he's saying. This should be a fun one to see. Um, I think he's made some other ones. I think I've had Brendan also before. So this should be a pretty decent one to check out. Bear with me as it loads here. But there's some pretty good stuff here that we should definitely be checking out. So big up the channel, Retroactive, for putting this together. This looks absolutely sick. Let's get it loaded up on the screen here. Bish bash bosh. There it is. The Endless Fall of Brendan Shaw, courtesy of the channel Retroactive. Give them a follow if you haven't already. Let's see what this is saying. Rogan's new comedy club, The Comedy Mothership, has abducted every comedian known to man except for Joe's old pal, Brendan Shaw, with the loss of the <laughs> LA scene hitting Brendan particularly hard. Heading to Austin. I'll see Mr. Rogan there. He's going to take me on a little tour of the mothership. What happened to that tour, though? What happened to that tour? Hey, Callan, you need to explain yourself. What happened to that tour? Did Brent, did Callan, did Rogan ever show you around the mothership? Or did he do like what he did to Legion of Skanks guys and just show you it and tell you to get out? <laughs> <laughs> like when he invited us to the studio at the time and showed them his toys. What happened? What happened? Oh. Comedy Mothership. I'm going to be at the Mothership in Austin. Oh, cool. It takes me a while. I sit in the parking lot for a while because it just, I used to pull up and Rogan would pull up in his Porsche and we'd park next to each other. We'd talk shop about the cars and what's next. And, you know, oh my God, Mark Zuckerberg's into jujitsu, man. This is crazy. And of course, Brendan. <laughs> He's such a hater, isn't it? He's the biggest hater. Oh, look at this. Look at this. They already got this video up on board. Oh my god. Big up um what's his name? Nathan Lasher, Nathan Laser Lasher, whatever your guy's name is. Big up you man. Might now be resorting to online memes for set inspiration. With the original creator of the video even commenting, pretty bud light of you to steal my joke dog. I've been drinking Bud Light for years, man. And I don't see how it makes you gay. Me and my brother are getting around town on scooters. We'll go by one homeless guy goes, nice jeans! bad joke in it what kind of i wonder what kind of normie out there goes to a fucking brendan shaw show and laughs at that kind of joke i actually want to be that person i think living a life like that where you find that kind of joke funny must be pretty sweet F having that kind of sense of humor must be pretty sweet like when you laugh at stuff like that it's probably you're probably the kind of person that laughs at that's what she said jokes right and it never gets old to you, right? That's what she said. It's like, fucking hell. I was like, sir, you don't have shoes. <laughs> to be fair, though, I was drinking a Bud Light. I was drinking a Bud Light. I was drinking a Bud Light. I was drinking a Bud Light, yeah. That's right, too, Mom. The Bud Light to do it, man. Within the jeans is the Bud Light. <laughs> How about Bud Light? God, they messed up. Huh? Boy, they just didn't leave the room, did they? They just... They don't know their audience. <laughs> if there's one thing you can kind of say about yeah you know, about flipping Brendan is that he doesn't read the room ever in his entire life. He's never read the room. The market was like, yeah, we're just trying to get rid of that bro culture. It's not what we want to represent. Like, he did not know who drinks Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't see the problem, Bud Light. Like, dude, I like Bud Light. Like, dude, people are so homophobic. Like, oh, you yeah, drink Bud Light, turn gay, get it out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it is. Perhaps. <laughs> that video is legendary. That was during the peak of the pandemic. <laughs> Big up that old lady <laughs> with the absolute flipping heavy, heavy hitters. Perhaps parallel thinking. Hitting Brendan even harder was Joe's mockery of Tiger Thick. <laughs> Brendan's venture into the every celebrity now sells booze timeline, as well as attempting to never be invited to Joe's club ever. What do you guys think of the name? You know what? I didn't like it at first. It, I gotta say it's growing on me. I, 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 I'm gonna hate on it because Rogan hated on my name on the on the whiskey. He's come up with a better name. <laughs> How dare you, Joe? Great club, hate the name. 
I, I, I thought <laughs> when I first heard it, I was like, comedy mothership. Once you say it enough. But yeah, it kind of grew on me, man. Like Once you say enough, it's like saying Joe Rogan's name enough, isn't it? Enough times, it just kind of it just rolls off the tongue. He's probably said Joe Rogan's name more in sequence than he's actually said his wife's name. I'm pretty sure if you go back through the TFAT case search engine and you search all the flipping episodes, he's probably said Joe Rogan's name more. Joe Rogan, right? His first name and his surname more times than he said his name of his kids or mentioned his kids or the mention of his wife or his wife's actual name. <laughs> it's like when a new expansion team comes to NFL, you're like, Carolina Panthers, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, gay. Yeah. Your stupid fucking whiskey is less money. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. I didn't even realize I said that. It's okay. I won't do it anymore. Okay. So you stupid fucking whiskey. <laughs> Sorry, dude. It comes out. No, it's natural. No, 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 it seems natural. So you're going to sell it? You make a bank? What's going on? This, this is the part of the not being a comedian thing that always gets me. He's not really good at riffing. He can't really, you know, jab back and forth when somebody's kind of teasing him. He just sits there and does like funny faces or kind of veiled threatening faces where legitimately... If you say too much, that whole room might go black, right? He might end up flipping dash choking everybody in that room. So you've got to be, you've got to be minding your P's and Q's. He's got that kind of tendency. As much as he tries to act cool and be chill, there's a rage that's just bubbling up underneath that fucking tight dad hat. You know, he's a ticking time bomb. Daddy, I got an offer. All right, so take that and be <laughs> done with it, dude. I don't have to hear you say thick Lies. nectar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shaw also recently thought the late Stephen Hawking was still alive. <laughs> Colbert asked, he goes, Ethan Hawke, what happens when we die? It's his question. Bring up Ethan Hawke. No, for me, for me, right? For me, this clip isn't the fact that Brendan Shaw fought Stephen Hawking, or as I would relate to him, Stephen Hawkings, because black people like to add fucking S's onto the end of names, like Joe Buddens and stuff, right? It's not the fact that he thought Stephen Hawking was still alive. It's the fact that he thought Ethan Hawke, the guy they were talking about, was Stephen Hawking. That's the thing that's way more funnier. Forget, you know, not remembering what notable figure in culture and whatever it may be in history and science and stuff is not alive anymore. I can forgive that. It's the fact that he legitimately thought Ethan Hawke was Stephen Hawking. That's legitimately, in this context of this story, what gets me. Hawk's answer. It's pretty cool. It was awesome. I, I uh, yeah, I definitely saw it. I fucking love Do you it. do in the robot voice? Do you do in the robot voice? <laughs> Brendan was also interviewed by Sean Puri, who revealed himself to be fighting for the other side, so to speak, as a peruser of the Fighter and the Kid subreddit. With Brendan's response surprisingly level-headed compared to what we're used to seeing, as well as admitting his views are down. You got a big fan base. You got a yeah. big anti fan base, and yes, uh, the anti fan base I think is on on, on Reddit. I go to this sub. I think. I think you know where it's at. Big up the homeless cats, big up P.F. Chang's, I think. You know exactly where that place is at. I've read it a bunch, but I'm not like, like, I, it's weird. I like you, but I also find it funny. Like, there's... I'm sorry. I think it's technically impossible. Hmm. It's not impossible. I think it's very unlikely that you're on Chang's and you also listen to the podcast on like a daily basis or a weekly basis, sorry. It's a consistent listen. It's impossible. Once you start seeing all the memes and the jokes, it's pretty difficult to look at that pod the same. It's just hard once you spot all the things. It's just, again, coming from a fan, a former fan like myself, it's just difficult to kind of listen to it with any kind of level of seriousness or humor in any way, shape or form. You just can't get past it. You notice all the mispronunciations. You notice the weird vibe between them. You notice how they're just phoning you in, clocking in, clocking out, and everything else. You notice the inaccuracies of the flipping articles read. You notice Brendan's inability to kind of admit when he's wrong. You notice Rinks just not knowing what he's talking about and trying to lean into this weird right-wing grift going on at the moment. You notice clean or chin in the background, trying his best to put the, hold the thing together. It's just too hard not to notice those things after you've been exposed to flipping Changs, personally. These, so clever these people and are they are dicks, so funny but they're also funny in the same way like it's kind of this this double thing i'm curious like you know it's probably funny for me because i'm outside of it i'm not the person that's the butt of the joke in, in some of these cases mm -hmm. but i'm curious mm -hmm. for you when you when you hear about the the sort of the stuff on the subreddit or you check it out or whatever do you have any moments where you're like all right they're kind of being mean about it or they're being a dick about it but there's some truth to what they're um crash 1984 people definitely still hate listen though 
I think so. But I don't think it's a lot because I think if you see over the, especially recently, there's not been as many clips uploaded on subreddit. It's difficult to really, have you, have you guys tried to watch the Fire and the Kid subreddit or to listen to it in full? Like, I think it comes out twice a week. Have you actually tried to listen to it? It's really difficult to listen to, like legitimately. Even if you're just trying to get clips to upload to make fun of Brendan or Brian, it's difficult to get through it. So there's not many people, even on the subreddit, who are willing to kind of look at those clips and clip them up. It's difficult to do. The one person that was doing it, BGL, basically threatened to dox him and he hasn't been seen ever since. I forgot his name again, but big up him. Um, that was the main person that used to always kind of watch the vid, watch the whole show and upload clips. But so far, not many people actually upload clips. It's hard to get through. So I don't think there's many hate listeners as people think there is out there personally. They're saying? I mean, yeah, I'm sure. You know, I don't, in all honesty, I, I don't pay attention to it. I think you, it's a it's a bad thing whether you pay attention to the negativity or the positivity. He just jacked that line from Brian Callan, by the way. Brian Callan kept saying that. I don't watch the hate or the negativity. Yeah, of course you don't watch the hate or negativity. So you don't watch the hate or the positivity because you got accused of fucking rape. It makes sense. You don't want to read your comments. Your comments must be fucking awful. I wouldn't read mine also if I put up a clip, you know, after being accused of that stuff. Like, of course you don't. But then Brian decided to kind of take it and just kind of make it move. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, I think you just got to keep doing your thing. You know, my heroes growing up didn't live heroes. this world, you know, so it can't be healthy. I think we'll find over years. That to get that my heroes didn't live this world, meaning everybody he looked up to, like Michael Jordan and shit, because they didn't live in this world. He has to also not live in this world. And comparing yourself to those guys is absolutely hilarious also. Incredibly redacted and hilarious. Digital CTE of no, reading comments yeah, every day. I already have, yeah, I already have enough CTE, man. I'm about to drive my Porsche off the PCH. But um, with the Reddit group, yeah, you, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, the watch everything you do and th there's there's some things that I'm on board with. And then the only there's a small... I would love him to say what you're on board with. I don't think he's on board with anything. I would love him to actually break down what he's on board with. What are the criticisms that you see on Chang's or that you see from people that don't like you that actually resonate? I would love to know because I don't think there are any that he actually agrees with. If someone told him, hey, you're a bully, he wouldn't agree with that. He would tell you, define bullying. If somebody told him, hey, you're a joke thief, he would say no. It's parallel thinking. Um, if somebody told him, um, hey, you're a cheater, he'd say no and just kind of deny it same way he denied the flipping and lead them and truck stories comment and basically said no nah, um this is all made up why would i do that kind of thing you just deny it if somebody said hey you mispronounce words a lot and you just get all the names fucked up and your speech you know whatever impediment that you allegedly had hasn't improved you've made no effort to improve it in at whatsoever um he'd obviously denied that if he said oh you don't like being corrected and you can't admit when you're wrong he would deny that so all those things that people point out in that subreddit, he wouldn't d admit to any of it. Zero. The only thing he may admit to is that, oh, I'm not Bill Burr or something. He does that weird kind of like backhanded compliment type of, no, backhanded. No, it's a weird, not even backhanded compliment. What is it? It's like a weird humble brag type of put down thing he does. Oh, I'm not Bill Burr, of course. Like he kind of compares himself to the greats. But no, it's not that you're not Bill Burr. It's that you're not even like open mic level. <laughs> that's what people are saying about your comedy it's not even good enough to even be at the clubs that you're at and most of the clubs that you're at is because of the flipping you know association you had with flipping joe rogan and brian callan and obviously the podcast success but he wouldn't want to admit that so this whole like oh yeah i i see where they're coming from on certain things is gobbledygook also like group on there who are just evil so there's difference between hate which i get i give you a lot to hate on i do a lot of content again you see this little humble brag you said, I do content. That's what you hate on. Not the fact that I'm maybe a very unlikable person or I've done very deplorable things. No, it's that I put out too much content. That's why you don't like me. <laughs> That's like saying, have you been to a job interview? Or people that, no, people that go to job interviews and say, um, when, the, when, the, you know, when the employer or the potential employer asks them, hey, um, are there any things that you kind of can, can improve on, areas that you think you need to work on and you're like, to kind of look impressive? I just work too hard, you know? I just give too much of myself to the companies that, I, that I'm at. Sometimes I just stretch myself too thin. 
sometimes I just take on too much work. Sometimes I could just be too creative, right? <laughs> sometimes I can just lose track of time and now suddenly I'm in the office and it's 8 p.m. Like I just need to kind of have a bit of a grip on my time. You know, time just goes really fast sometimes for me. It's that weird type of humble grab. Like that's what he's basically saying. I do too much content. That's why you hate me. Not because I might have, you know, tried to hook up with one of my best friends in comedy at the time in Bobby Lee's flipping girl at the time behind their, his back, even though I said I loved and respected him. Not the fact that, you know, I told these flipping, you know, co-hosts that he had in Malik and Chappelle that they couldn't talk about Black Lives Matter on his podcast, even though his podcast has always been political, but he didn't let them flip and talk about Black Lives Matter when the whole George Floyd incident went down. Like, no one can hate me about that. No one can hate him about the flipping throwing the guy through the glass door. No one can hate him about all the other scandals he's been involved in. No, you can't hate me about that. You have to hate him only because of the content. He just does too much content. He's a white boy that works too much, allegedly, right? What flipping Floyd, Floyd Mayweather said to him. Okay, cool. Sh sure, buddy. I make a lot of jokes. I offend a lot of people. My buddy. <laughs> he thinks it's Patrice. <laughs> He thinks he's Patrice. I offend a lot of people. What? <laughs> hey, Joe Rogan. Nobody, you know, I don't know anybody gets more hate than that guy, but he gets more love. You know, I'm in the business of likability. You know, when you're doing for... The most unlikable person in the world says I'm in the business of likability. You know, actually, to give the guy some, to give him some advice, if he legitimately thinks he's in the business of likability, he probably, more than anybody, should be more aware of why people don't like him. That should be the first thing that you should do. So you try to address it. And obviously you don't, you don't need to go on the Reddit and do an AMA and stuff. It's not that. Just see what they say and try and correct it in real time with your actions, right? So less apologies and more flipping actions with words and deeds. You would have think so. For 12 years, it's like this. You know, it's like this. So, you know, we've been as high as 600,000 an episode, as low as 100,000 an episode. So I love how he says that with a straight face. And thinks it's all to do with cancel culture, but not to do with the quality of the show. I personally think it's both, or both, as Ben would say. It's definitely both. I think cancel culture definitely affected them. And I think, no, I think it's many things. Maybe even COVID, because these guys were insufferable when the pandemic was happening. They were going on tour still. They were spreading the virus everywhere. People's granddads were flipping dying because these fucks went to perform at flipping ha-has in Spokane or wherever the fuck that shit is, right? They were going out of their way to do it. They wanted to be nowhere but home. And legitimately, people were getting annoyed at them for doing so. And then on top of that, um, the show went to shit. And then on top of that, you know, everybody in, the, in their kind of crew got cancelled for some pretty crazy crimes. Chris uh, accused of diddling, and then, of course, Bren, Brian accused of uh, flipping rape. Some fans who are decent people may have thought, you know what, I'm not listening to you anymore because I don't ascribe or I'm not a fan of, you know, pedos and alleged rapists and stuff. That's okay to say, isn't it, if you're a fan of the show. Say, hey, you know what, I'm going to tap out because I'm not a fan of these guys. Number one, you're skirting all the pandemic regulations and stuff and pushing the limit and going on tour when the world's on fire. Number two, you know, you you surround yourself with pedos and rapists. And number three, you know, the show's gone to shit. That could be legit reasons why you don't watch the show anymore and why it affected numbers. But in his head, it's all cancel culture. So that, that and it's, you know, there's been some outlying factors, you know, that, that caused those issues. So it, and then with the changing of King of the Sting with Theo leaving, you're talking about a whole new show. So you start from basically from scratch again to start with Chris D'Elia and Eric Griffin. It's a completely different show. Than so basically he's saying Chris D'Elia and Eric Griffin can't hold a candle to Theo Vaughn. You know what? That's a very clear indication that cancel culture definitely affected them. Or no, res yeah, the actions that they allegedly were accused of, you know, affected them negatively. Because there was a time and you guys will definitely agree to this, where back in the day, um, Chris D'Elia and Theo used to have the same amount of pull. Like, if Chris, D'Elia, if Chris D'Elia or Theo went on the Fire and the Kid as a guest, they'd get the same amount of views, like 500,000, sometimes into the millions. Like, you could see there were instant bumps in viewership. But then, with Chris D'Elia's pedo allegations, it feels like now he doesn't really give podcasts the bump that he used to give. So even when he appears on Bad Friends, so when he appears on Good Hour, Golden, no Good Hour, Golden Hour, whatever the fuck that show is, 
it doesn't really get that many views compared to his previous stuff. It's like a hundred thousand. And then his own podcast does about that sometimes under a hundred thousand. So it goes to show that Theo's gone from like strength to strength. He's really kind of rocketing up there into the air, um, you know, heading into orbit um, since he's left flipping Brendan and Chris Alia's pull or his appeal isn't what it once was at all. The dynamics completely different. Howie Mandel somehow didn't ask about the train wreck that was the Logan Paul Shaw appearance. Is it coming out two years? Oh, awesome. Where is it coming out? Uh, YouTube. You're a YouTube. Are you a vlogger? No, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, one of the most insightful things I got from BGL's um, domestic abuse, you know, flipping world tour, right, that he was doing with his, you know, psycho ex-wife, was that when he basically told people, I think on the subreddit he may have did an AMA, he said, again, take BGL's uh, version of events with a sprinkle of, you know, a lot of Himalayan salt. But he said that Brendan actually thought this interview went well. He thought legitimately this interview went well. That's when I knew Brendan was a different, different type of guy. He's a different type of guy. His brain is maybe, you know, is just on another planet. That sense of delusion just doesn't, you can't make sense of that. How you can leave this flipping episode of Impulsive where these guys wanted to be nowhere else but in front of you, where Mike was constantly giggling and shit and doing eyes over to Logan and they were having this really strange, they were kind of having this kind of like subtle friends only conversation between themselves with their eyes and stuff, intimating that the guest was shit. Why did you bring him on? Who's this guy? Like it was blatant in front of him, but he didn't, clock it he's like no that went pretty good well actually that went pretty well that was horrible i actually felt bad for brendan during his pod i don't think he deserved to be treated this way i think it was actually quite a bad look on logan and flipping mike's part of it that they didn't do any research on him whatsoever didn't know he was doing a special on youtube didn't really give him a platform to kind of be himself he was kind of tight clearly because the vibes weren't great but like, they treated him like, they treat him like absolute shit <laughs> personally they treat him like absolute shit <laughs> and he thought this went well so big up bgl for providing that insight big up bgl for providing that insight you do youtube you know try <laughs> you're doing great instead focusing on shorb's <laughs> denim dungeon plus the added bonus of irony with ethan klein judging shorb's appearance you were on logan paul's podcast you had a camel oh toe. my goodness <laughs> you had a camel oh toe. wow do you remember that no i don't <laughs> that's clear and you know what's funny too that's obviously been photoshopped because they did the same thing when um, those girls from, I think, Cooler Daddy. Do you guys remember that? There's a picture of Brendan with the girls from Cooler Daddy and somebody put Brendan in those girl jeans. Let's see. I think Brendan Shaw. I think Andrew Santino's in it also. It's an old picture from the Fire and the Kids subreddit. Andrew Santino. <clears throat> Call her daddy. I'm sure it was. I'm sure. I'm sure this is what I'm thinking. Someone made a picture of them and somebody put the girl jeans on Brendan. Yeah, I think it was this picture. That picture here. Somebody did the same sort of thing where he's wearing this tight clothes and they put the girl jeans on him because he had this weird kind of effeminate sort of post. I mean, pose, sorry. And they put those girl jeans on him. So clearly the flipping picture had been doctored. Clearly it had been doctored, but he's not smart enough to fucking realize that. It's absolutely hilarious. Oh, that's, you have a, what do you call that? A moose, a moose, a moose knuckle? knuckle. <laughs> that's that. in this room. That's me nuts. That's me nuts. That's those, a vagina. Those jeans, those that's a denim vagina. Dude, what is even going on there? What is even going on there? <laughs> but you just maybe you shouldn't call so much attention to it. No, you just say nuts. it's no good. That's no, that was on big nuts. I, I didn't do it. Oh, we did. That's, that's <laughs> a denim vagina. No, that's my nut split like that. You know what the, no, problem, you know what the problem is? The jeans are too tight. No, that's, that's not the oh, problem. Really? No, no. Really? I don't even. He might even be violating YouTube terms of service by bringing attention to his genitals. According to accomplished MMA fighter Sean McCorkle, nicknamed Big Sexy, mutual friends have revealed to him that Rogan is happy to now be distanced from Shorb, who's still in LA. Telling Shorb to hold down the fort while offering to buy more favored friends like Uncle Joey Diaz a house. Sean and Shorb have been beefing since 2010, so it's hard to verify the validity. But Rogan's actions do line up with this version of events hold on what it says here this is sean mccorkle's post on on um, reddit somebody asked him 
Thanks for your service to Changs. You have any info on the current state of Rogan and Brennan's relationship? It seems like Joe still has him on the fight companions, um, but he doesn't defend him or go out of his way to put him over as he would have, in, as you would say in pro wrestling. Sean McCorkle posted, no matter what Joe says, I know for a fact from mutual friends that Joe has joked that one of the biggest bonuses was moving to Texas was put in some space between him and Shaw. <clears throat> wow. Wow. That makes sense. You know what that you know why that makes sense to me? As much as uh as much as Joe tries to kind of act like he's a badass and that he's this kind of alpha dude, I also get the I also get the impression he's quite conflict averse. Especially when you become rich, I think. There's usually a tendency, I think, when you're rich and you've made a lot of money, you don't really want to explain yourself. And sometimes conflict, you kind of feel like you're explaining yourself. So he kind of has a bit of that kind of aloofness and just general apathy to explain and to whatever himself in general. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's the kind of guy who gets pulled into doing favors for people because he just doesn't like confrontation and he'd rather just give you the favor. So if it, if it means you're his friend and you want to go on his show, you just say yes, just so you stop bugging him. Just so you stop texting him and stop DMing him. Like, I think that's the deal too. So it wouldn't surprise me if Brendan is the kind of guy to always ask, hey, Joe, can I come on? Hey, Joe, can I promote this? Hey, can I do this? Can I do this? And Brendan and Joe always says yes because he's there and close to him. But now that he's away and he's somewhere far, similar to what we saw with Joey Diaz, that distance has created a bit of space and allowed him to kind of do his own thing and also given an excuse to ignore people. I think so. Maybe. You know, that's giving him a, a, a flipping... Because it's, if it was me and I was Joe Rogan and I had flipping 300 million in a bank, like, and you tell me to do something that I don't want to do, I'll tell you to fuck off. I actually think having that kind of money should give you more of a right to tell people to go fuck themselves. But I guess if you've always been kind of rich like Rogan, after, especially if you have a big podcast, it gets kind of exhausting having to say why you don't want to have someone on the show, why you f it's not a good time. The, it just gets tiring, which is why it makes sense why Rogan's been so quick to run you know, away from everybody when it comes to the comedy mothership and to kind of point everybody in the direction of fucking, what's his name? Adam Eager. Like, no, deal with Adam Eager. I don't want none of this. Adam Eager's the one to charge the booking. Deal with him. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, Sean McCougal said that. Um, he said, Shub is like the chick who you went on a couple dates with and banged once and just don't get and just doesn't get that you'll never be in a relationship with each other. I also know for a fact that he's told Shub to stay in LA and hold down the fort. Oh, that's where that phrase comes from. Do you remember? During like the pandemic, or no, during the end of the pandemic, actually, um, when I think Brenda was talking about considering going to Texas, and then I think his wife said she doesn't want to go there, he then said something about, oh, he wants to stay in LA and hold down the fort. So clearly, this is something that he kind of parroted from Rogan, because if there's one thing we know about Brendan, he loves to be a parrot. He loves to just kind of repeat the things that more successful people say, because it makes him sound more successful. So this is probably where he got that little phrase from. It continues here. It says, meanwhile, there's, what's that? Meanwhile, there's what? Over a dozen Rogan buddies who moved to Austin with him. Rogan told Joey Diaz he'd buy him a house and a guarantee Mexican isn't leaving the LA. Well, true. My prediction, honestly, is that they'll get divorced and Bapa will move to Austin despite not being invited and will blame Mexican for alienating his kids from him. Really? No, I don't think that's happening. I don't think the wife is leaving Brendan anytime soon. Um, she's way, she's in too deep. They have kids and stuff, responsibilities. She doesn't seem like she has anything going on personally. Again, I don't know. Maybe she does. So, and she has expensive tastes. So why not? If, if, if you don't mind it, honestly, if you really don't mind a bit of infidelity, because this is a bit of a hot take here, but I think people sometimes make a big deal out of infidelity, especially cheating in married couples that have kids. I think people make too much of a big deal out of it. I think if the couple are okay with an arrangement, where the guy or the woman is allowed to do what they want outside of the house, as long as it doesn't come back in the house and you have kids and you kind of get on and it's mutually beneficial, sometimes staying together is probably beneficial for both parties. Because I'm sure, you know, I would, I would assume she doesn't want to be with the kids all the time. He doesn't want to be with the kids all the time either. 
So the fact that you're together, it kind of helps to kind of look after the kids in that way. And you don't want to be out there in the streets, you know, as appetizing as it may be. Being in your 40s and being single out in the streets probably isn't the funnest time in the world, right? Trying to get down with the kids and whatnot and make that work, you know, it just probably isn't that fun. So if you can find somebody that can kind of let you cheat and you can do it outside of the house sometimes if you've got kids, it maybe isn't that bad of an arrangement maybe so i don't think this this whole narrative that people have on the reddit that she's gonna leave him never happening in my opinion especially if you consider where she's from being mexican uh being somewhat religious it's not happening bro never happening and then he had the you sean mccorkle's a funny f guy he yeah. says some ridiculous shit online <laughs> i love him brendan i love him brendan wants to be a hater but then he kind of tempers it this is <laughs> because yeah. <laughs> Joe Rogan has no idea that him and Sean McCorkle absolutely hate each other and they have this kind of like you know this feud online Joe has no idea it's not Sean McCorkle's fucking hilarious man he's a really funny dude I like that guy look at Brendan's reply I don't know why, is he, is he still alive? But that's okay, still alive. because Brendan will inevitably follow Father Rogan straight past the homeless to his new place in Austin, Texas. I was telling him, I was like, where are we going to go? So I was like, there's Texas. I was like, you go, I'll go, man. Because he's like me. It's, he's uh, like, if you go, I'll go, you know that. As even during... Of course, right-wing grift Brian Callen is going to head over to Austin and try and LARP as a conservative. That guy has no political spine to speak of, let alone an actual spine. So this fact that he's trying to do the whole right wing grift thing is hilarious, in my opinion, because he doesn't stand for anything. No principles, no morals, no nothing. The moment he gets invited back into Hollywood, he would leave all his conservative beliefs behind and suddenly be a lefty again. So this whole conservative LARP he's doing is quite embarrassing, to be honest. Diary appearances. Many have noticed just how often Brendan repeats back exactly what Joe says, as was well cut by the YouTuber TFATK. For real. He's for real. His fights in his early career were way more exciting. He was a savage early yeah, on. He was very technical and the, the volume. The volume. And the bobbing and weaving that Robbie was doing. Like, what was all that about? He had to like, be tired. I mean, I guess so. Doing all that bobbing and weaving. Like, oh, yeah. Tired. <laughs> And he's a big fucking strong guy. And when he clipped him with that left guy. hook and knocked him out. He looked slow. Yeah, he looked real slow. Compared. Santos a fucking savage, man. Santos a sh savage for sure. Controversial opinion. Unpopular opinion. I actually think in recent years, this was the best example of Brendan Shaw. This was the best representation of him. Comedic wise, personality wise. Even though he would get on Rogan and just parrot what he said, at least he was going on Rogan trying to be funny trying to be insightful he'd come on there with prepared hot takes he'd come on there with prepared stories that he wanted to speak about he'd clearly done some research on topics he wanted to speak about he would try his best to enunciate and pronounce words properly he would be on his a game like even look even look at his appearance he looks showered moisturized hair slicked back wearing a shirt that looks like it's been washed like he looks well put together even he actually did come with his A game. So even though it was funny to see him parrot exactly what Rogan said, this was the best version of him on pods. When he went back to T K, it would be him slouching, drinking whiskey out from a bottle, you know, phoning it in, clocking in, clocking out, not giving a simple fuck. But actually, when he was on Rogan, he actually tried to be somewhat entertaining and to be somewhat decent as a podcaster, weirdly enough. And I 100% support reversing that loss. 100%. It the <laughs> as well as the loss of Theo. <laughs> exactly. Wearing a wash shirt is the lowest bar I've heard in my life. But it's a bar. It's still something that he has to kind of aim for. And I still think it's there. Itachi, yeah, he looks like he might as well have decent. Honestly, he does look well. Like, consider what you've seen of Brendan now. The bloated face, the whiskey face, the addy face. You know, the baddie fingers like just in general right those fucking awful sweat je sweat jean pant things that he has on Vaughn with the king in the sting there's also been outbursts towards vince mcmahon and dana white for avoiding cancel culture with shorb having a point but not really hold on how, how did he pronounce vince mcmahon vince mcmahon how do you pronounce is that how you pronounce vince mcmahon towards vince mcmahon and dana white for avoiding Vaughn vince with McMahon. the king in the sting there's also been outbursts towards vince mcmahon and dana white <laughs> vince mcmahon is that how you pronounce Vince McMahon or is it Vince Vince McMahon? 
Vince McMahon. Also, Theo Vaughn with The King and the Sting. There's also been outbursts towards Vince McMahon and Dana White for avoiding cancel culture, with Shorb having a point but not realizing Chris D'Elia and Brian Callen are not of equal power in the industry. Any action should be taken. I'm just saying, how weird is it that there's been people accused of way less who lost their careers? There's video of Dana Sultan as well. There's endless accounts and witnesses and the guy had to step down from his position as the chairman of WWE. There's tons of evidence. That was a weird hill to die on considering flipping Chris Salia has like hundreds of victims, isn't it? Alleged victims. Hundreds. And also considering Brian Callen got brought down by like four corroborated stories of four different women who accused him of some creepo stuff one of rape and the other ones of harassment and shit four of them and in each occasion it, with each case in terms of chris Salia and brian cannon neither person provided any alternative narrative as brendan Shaw will say no alternative narrative they definitely begged to differ and kept their mouth shut they didn't say anything they didn't push back or zero so even though he thinks in his head vince mcmahon and what's his name and um dana white did far worse than what his friends did i would argue that rape is pretty high up there <laughs> i would argue allegedly running a flipping sex cult and brandishing women and potentially being a pedo is legitimately up there and actually if you're being honest also they got away with it they got away with it which is okay that's why i don't understand this whole crying stuff most people most everyday normal people even just lower level content creators myself included you get accused of rape or you get accused of you know being a pedo it's over for you lights out cancel christmas as smack would say on flipping back on fig it's a wrap go home now it's done but these guys get an opportunity to still tour they still have successful podcasts they still sell merch they still have fans and loving like life isn't too bad okay you got you know removed from hollywood you can't do anything with netflix again fair enough some people won't want to be seen on the podcast with you or take pictures of you okay that must have hurt but in overall's grand scheme of things you're not having to work at fucking target or wendy's or some everyday normal job you're still somewhat a celebrity in your own little bubble it's not too bad in my opinion so this this is a real false equivalency legit evidence but then i have friends who've been canceled for way less these men have gotten bigger they've made more money in denver in De also comparing flipping brian cannon and crystalia to fucking vince mcmahon and dana white is an insult to vince mcmahon and dana white just fyi ever owns hollywood so hollywood wants to sit on their high horse and say this guy can't perform here or this guy can't be in this movie that but these two are okay Two graphic designers, Sweens07 and Reddit user Lloyd from Canada, claim they weren't paid by Brendan for the promotional material now smeared across his social media. There's also this strange Instagram post recently where Brendan visited Ted Bundy's childhood home. Except, of course, he took and shared a photo of the wrong house. And for a final blame on Reddit for the bad reviews, Papa Bapa might never find the word accountability. ...of him speaking, and it spit out an hour-long stand-up set by Tom Brady, and the person that I know that listened to it said it was good it got better reviews than mine god damn oh it. dude it didn't even <laughs> god it's god. that joke wasn't even that good but also he didn't let it rest he didn't he didn't let people laugh at him he went to laugh at himself first so if you're going to be self-deprecating you got to just let it kind of sit give it some space but he didn't even want to give it some space or some breathing room he's ugh, got straight in there god damn it because he didn't really want to hear it, actually. <laughs> uh, you know. Reddit didn't go bad. On That's just, it's crazy what AI can, I mean, it's just insane. This is what it feels like to converse with somebody who never shuts up. Enjoy. Looking at your performance, you know, I've followed your career <laughs> since day one, man. Even before the UFC, <laughs> you being a high altitude guy. And I remember you coming. This legitimately, the, the flipping um, food truck diaries is unfortunately one of the best shows that brendan has in his catalog or in his archive or under his thick boy banner but it's also one of the worst it brings out all the worst things about him eating into the microphone the never-ending questions the run-on sentences the lack of structure 
the lack of real good production everything about this show fucking sucks and to this day i don't understand how he gets this caliber of guests on his show maybe because he's a former fighter he can call in some favors or whatever it may be or maybe some people just hate ariel and they don't want to go on his show so they want to go on another show so they go on his but i legitimately don't understand why he can't see how shit this show is and make some changes because this show is only maybe second to the short show in terms of shit levels personally when it comes to food truck diaries this guy is the worst host ever 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 let's start this question again to converse with somebody who never shuts up enjoy looking at your performance you know i've followed your career since day one man even before the ufc you being a high altitude guy and i remember you coming in there as this lanky basketball player and then i mean jesus christ you're the best in the world life is crazy man it is life crazy. is crazy yeah i remember is. you walking in like, like it was yesterday and just be like holy shit look at that kid and then talking. christian even then was like yeah he's athletic man I was like, yeah, he's a basketball player you know, he's a basketball player, white basketball player, dude. You yeah. know, he's, he's going to be athletic. Mm. And actually, you know, you're one of the best in the world. Also, it's kind of sad because it also shows he doesn't really have any friends. Because that happens to me sometimes, too, where I'll see somebody I haven't seen in ages and I'll just start chewing their ear off because I haven't spoken to anybody <laughs> in real life <laughs> in ages. So I can notice it straight away. That's essentially what he's doing. Outside of hanging out with his wife and his kids and everybody he pays to do podcasts with, he probably doesn't talk to many other people. Legit, like day to day. He has, doesn't have many conversations. So when he does get on these shows with these fighters and, you know, they're from the same, you know, they're from the same walk of life in terms of being former UFC fighters to different levels of success, but they're still from the same area. He kind of wants to kind of, you know, connect with them and be friends and shit. That makes sense. But you look at your fight with Cheeto Vera, and I, you're probably exhausted talking about it after doing Rogan for three hours. <laughs> with, in, side note here, have you ever talked to somebody in your life for three hours, no. dude? If sure. By the way, that's that's a joke he jacked from fucking Fear of Vaughn. Fear of Vaughn said that once, and he jacked it. Another another joke premise thing he stole. Dedicates himself for the next decade, improves his comedy a little, and has less blunders on camera. That would probably change things, as having tight skits and strong stage presence could win over those with negative connotations towards the Brendan brand. And thank you for watching. I am going to try to convince Brendan Shaw to do the lie detector test on the show. I'll ask him if he's trying to bang Andy Letterman on the truck walk. Yeah. That's not going to happen, by the way. What's going to happen is that Brendan's going to go on the fucking Legion of Skanks show. He's going to go on Skankfest and especially Luis J. Gomez. He's desperate to get into Joe Rogan's good graces. He's going to be sucking off Brendan. They're all going to suck him off. Dave Smith's not going to say anything because he wants to protect his connection with Joe. Um, Big J. Oakerson also not going to say much and stick the boot in because he wants to protect his relationship with Joe. And Luis J. Gomez is going to be left there trying to basically be Brendan's friend. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be kind of cringe. There probably will be some fun moments in it, but it'll be kind of cringe. And also, this is all, and to, this is all while thinking that most likely he will cancel. A lot of people on the subreddit are saying he's going to cancel. I don't think he will. I don't think it'd be that dumb to do so and kind of, you know, give haters an easy thing to dunk him on. I think he will turn up, but it'll be an absolute horror show, in my opinion. To do the lie detector test on the show, I'll ask him if he's trying right. to bang Andy Letterman on the truck walk. Yeah, poor hmm? yeah rescues are poor people, though. Well, wow. okay. <laughs> I know. So 20% of just pure haters, then there's 20% of fucking hype boys, lovers. I'm probably over here. And then 80% is in the middle. <laughs> 80, 20, 20. That makes 100%, right? This guy has two degrees. Two degrees, and he's a multi millionaire. Life definitely isn't fair. Middle. Where they're like, yeah, we fuck. It's great, man. We fuck with it, but it doesn't. On a scale to Brandon Schaub to 10, what'd you rate it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, big up Retroactive. That was absolutely brilliant. Big up Retroactive. Check out their channel, Retroactive. There, it's available now. I'm going to give this a flipping up vote, mate. Give that a like. Actually, on the subject of likes, make sure you're liking this stream too if you enjoy it, right? You see me liking this in real time. Unlike, liking, unlike, liking. Make sure you're doing the same thing with me down below. Make sure you're doing the same thing with me down below.